Hey guys, so we're back with another video. This time we'll be talking about my Ipspada rankings. So this time we'll be discussing the preview on Ipspadas as well as the former Ipspadas currently. So guys, this will not be an order based on just strength, but it also how I would rank my Ipspadas based on ability and why each of them will fare against each other due to the fact of advantage now as we have learned before when the espada arc was starting some espadas will work well during the day while the other ones will only work during the night now a lot of people that has done rankings before never mentioned that due to the fact that the only espada that we saw that had an effective or disadvantage was a spot of nine out of Nero and out of Neri. Now we are going to be talking about each spot and what what their strength and abilities are because we know that Aizen created like a fake um, um, palace inside the palace had like a fake daylight um, whereas you know Hakamundo is basically shrouded in darkness which there's there there's just a moon there there's no like sunlight or anything so we're gonna be discussing that and why each spot will work fairly better when they're like in their elements because the number one thing is that each spot will work in their elements so the first spot we're going to be talking about is the previous spot now the first preview on Espada that we're going to talk about that we didn't really get too much information of was Espada, um, not Espada, but I think he was a preview on that was um, Delbone. I will put him at the C rank because we only saw him when there was the invasion of the Karakura town and that by the time Rukia stepped back into the he's part of the executional force for the hollows he execute lower hollows when they're not behaving I think that's what Aizen put him there in charge now I'm not sure what his release form is called but it's very similar to um, like a tree or um, a spot of eight Aizelipedo um, his resurrections allow him to create like he becomes like a tree and basically creates more of the bone stealth force that is very similar to squads too um, we didn't see too much feet from him but in a weird way he creates so much of of copies that his powers are in numbers but that's how far I could put him on the list right now okay so I will put him at C because he tried his best to like put up with like a fight but from what I have heard um, and I was checking up he was a how would I put this he was a fraction that was under Ukiora which he called Ukiora you know master Ukiora and that's why um, he was like one of those um, underlings under so each spot has like some sort of an underling and Ukiyara that was his underling if I might not be mistaken okay which was pretty cool because we never got too much information about him but I found it cool um, Another Espada that I wanted to talk about is Espada, well, preview on Espada. Espada 106, I think. I will put him there too. He was the guy that was fighting Chad. Um, his abilities was cool. Now, I would love for them, before we even continue, I would love for them to give them more backstories. How they used to look like when they were like part of the Espada like I never ex they never explained that but based on that he's Espada 106 I was assuming that he would have been Espada 6 which would probably be cool I'm not sure but it all depends um because I think his ranking was Espada 106 if I'm not mistaken so yeah 105 or 106 I'm not sure but his resurrection when he was fighting Chad 
it was very similar to like Chad's ability and his appearance is pretty cool too like he gives me like the 70s vibe um, and 60s vibes like with the big poofy hair and like that almost like the 70 clothes he's wearing like disco ball which was pretty cool um, his resurrection allows him to create like this plot of armor which I will put it here at C range that's how far it will go like his design appearance for his resurrection is pretty cool um, but that's how far I think I would put him now the he doesn't change as that much it's just that he creates like this layer of armor and shoot this sort of fire plasma that is generated underneath that um, cloak of armor of his and that's how he generates the heat and power to attack his opponents so yeah I would put him here but that's about it so moving on to the next preview on his Spada we have um, Cindy Satuinch um, I like her character design like I said I will put her under B tier um, um, I really like her design and that uh, the cool part about her transformation like at first she has like this sort of like um, technique where her sword is like a boomerang where it could move around and also the where they were fighting she was fighting I think Uriu and the cool thing about the um, the area is that she was able to move around so quickly that nobody was able to like catch her catch her she was moving around with such ease and then until she decided to like really start moving around that's when it becomes like a, a um, ability to like really you know but she had like those um, very cool personality now her resurrection I think it's called um, since she is a prevernal spada her resurrection is called Sandy da Dorina which her transformation she almost a representation like the of a giant freaking bee and I freaking like it you know um, it's pretty cool like I said I like the design and how each of the design represents something from their past and she's probably one of the few spotters when she could shed her resurrection if she has to the more she release parts of her resurrection the faster she becomes like for an example her wings are like um, vibrations so it could cut through anything but it is so heavy to like carry that around and that's why I put her right here but I think her resurrection as well as her design for her resurrection was pretty cool now now I'm going down to one of my favorite preview on the spot as <laughs> Daldorni he was probably funny like his entrance that's why he's in B tier like He's very comedic relief and at the same time is pretty cool of his design. Like he's very her him and um Sedwit uh Asuwich uh Asintowich are pretty cool um espadas. Um definitely I like the, the aspect of design. He looked like a Lutra uh he looked like a um a dancer, like a um Lucha Libre dancer, like um it's pretty cool and his speech pattern is pretty cool because he kept telling Ichigo like you know you can't really defeat me Nino <laughs> and all these stuff like, I really find the you know the charismatic thing about that and you know you have some espadas that are not complete like assholes like they don't really you know be those type of ones that takes advantage of their opponents you know even though if they play around sometimes they're teaching their opponents how to fight the greater enemy which is very trippy in the anime world to, to do that so I did find that very cool that even though he was still like fighting Ichigo 
he was still telling them like you can't give like the opponents chance just because they're your enemy you have to be tougher or even more ugly like he was giving him like life lessons of how to fight you know certain opponents especially when versus in the high, the new hierarchy of Espadas. Now, the cool thing is that we did start seeing him back. We did see some of them back in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, the preview on Espadas. Some of them that managed to stay alive because Myori did something to their bodies where they became useful. So I really liked them because it took, I think, Dolbone who actually executed him while he was still defeated after fighting Ichigo so but his resurrection um I forgot the name of his resurrection so let me explain the name of his resurrection to you guys so yes yeah, so his ranking is Espada 103 and I believe that during his um during his lifetime he was probably Espada 6 or 7 because he said that he used to be very privileged to be up there with the, you know, um, Espadas and stuff like that. So, his, um, his resurrection is called Empris Gorglilia, Gordola, Gordola. So, in that form, he gained, like, um passionate I would say passionate feet <laughs> like I put that up there along with B tier because even though he was a jokester he became quite effective because of the speed and his ability now we did not know what his aspect of death is um, I would probably think it was like pridefulness probably it depends um, they never specify what his um you know resurrection might entails but i think he did like a pretty good job like his resurrection is probably very unique because his feet work each time he moves his feet or something it creates these two twin eels and it shoots like different um abilities which i really like his resurrection you know have like these spikes he looks like a dancer but at the same time could still kick your ass if he has to and you know the more he moves his feet the more you know energy passion that he used the more powerful his kicks and abilities become so I really liked it that about his resurrection now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of things now this is Spada I'm placing him below because I don't really like his attitude and the fact that you know when you're a sexist I just don't have a care for you at all but he is still strong so for attitude and you know first appearance like you're flexing that you're stronger than everybody else but at the same time you, you you're gonna get your ass kicked just because you know you're talking bad about you know somebody um, this person I'm talking about is Noritora. I'm gonna put him under the D and F because I can't stand his um, guts. That's one. And two, he literally is very, very, very bad when it comes to um, how to speak to certain, um, you know, other. Um, groups because he thinks he's so high and mighty that no one's ever gonna catch him but at the same time he met his match now even though his attitude stinks um, he still has some of the fastest um, you know speed blitz and the amount of um, abilities that he possess when he start getting serious like he has this arrogance to himself even though he's ranked a spot of five and his um his resurrection is called Santa Teresa and the abilities that he possess on that so like I said guys his resurrection is called Santa Teresa and Noritora Jilga that's his um, full name like I said 
his abilities as he transformed like his his the name of his resurrection is pretty cool and i think the aspect of death that he um represent is the aspect of despair and he hates having like a woman be stronger than him that was his whole deal with um nail which i kind of hate and the crazy part is that like i said the aspect of death are actually do matter in the rankings because even eisen said like for an example the situation between Noritora and Nell. It wasn't that Noritora was stronger than her. It's that it was two Espadas versus one. And that it was about the smartness. Because you have some Espadas that are smarter than some. And they're able to like think ahead of the other one. So that's why I put him here. Because he is very, very shady. Because he don't like... He's flunking his ego. But at the same time... Um, when it comes to like being an honorable person. Or like trying to show respect to like his enemies. He don't like doing that. Um, but his resurrection name is cool. Santa Teresa. And he is... The transformation he has... You know... It's like a praying mantis... Um, but they never like he has some regenerative powers. Um, he gained like three, two extra arms. He ended up having six. He didn't change as much, and then his sword actually splits into different parts, thus making him, you know, like a um, multi handed uh, set gene or something. So his resurrection form, I would put it under B tier because he really did like started fighting. But the no better yet, I'll put I'll put him under C tier because he as strong as he was and he started beating Grimja while he was down, which is like it's a no for me because like you could have beat him when you were at your best while the person was still like strong like you claim to be strong but at the same time you're beating people that's like lower than you and you're only beating them when they're like completely down just to feel better about yourself so Noritor is not so no no for me um but when it comes to like him flunking his aspect you could clearly saw that even as he was fighting he started showing more of the aspect of the despair because he was so desperate to like trying to find a way to like hit his opponent just to feel better and to push even further that's why even when he was fighting Kenpachi Kenpachi he is a honorable man and he's an honorable captain and said that you know I beat you but I want you to come back again to like he gave him a sort of a chance but he didn't want to accept to that like he really wanted to not you know do that so that's how he ended up dying in the first place but that's how far he's gonna go up the list now my next Espada that I think should be recognized and I'll probably put him in a higher tier due to his not only his intelligence but his ability but um because he was in cahoots with Noritora, I could only put him in this tier, the D to F tier. I'll switch, yeah, D to F tier. He is, you know how they say guilt by association? Because you helped Noritora accomplish his goals to take down someone just because of something. And then you wanted to use that opportunity to... Um, gain something from it and his ability I think not ability but his um what's his name his resurrection is basically fornication for Kuhrits, uh Frank Karatsi Finkatsurats basically fornication Isola Pudo Grants and he, he because is that like he it has a lot of other translation but He's a spot of number eight, and five and eight are very slime ball, and I hate that 
and that's another thing I wanted to talk about some of the spotters that fought they just tend to fight in between um, Lost Noches instead of going to like the real world or the fake Karakura town because Aizen, as much as as much as Aizalapada was smart Aizen did not really trust him like that anyway you know he really wanted to be like Mayuri you know he was smart to outdo some of his opponents but that's literally about it like he's not gonna do anything crazy but as he goes to his transformation he became very I would say deadly that's why I would put him under B tier if he were to fought with Noritora all he would have to do is to learn some of the abilities that Norito has used if he has like battle experience and then from then on it's the rest is history you know he literally created a room to subdue um, spiritual pressure for Renji and the other gang that were there so he's very I will give him that like he's very smart when it comes to um, you know fighting out opponents and creating things now he do have like a his own zero like Dunray Sarah as well he also has an ability where he could literally resurrect himself from other people's bodies which is very alien versus um, predator type of shit um, it's crazy that his abilities work very well with other people and becomes very deadly but against other scientists like himself it basically nullifies that's another thing I have learned now one of other abilities that he possess is that he's able to um, absorb you and that was from his like impatching wings basically absorb you and then have a way where he could literally recreate himself or create like a little voodoo dolls of you to basically um, create things and then destroy like stomach vital points inside your body so he's very similar to Zamari where he's able to control certain parts in your body whereas in his case from that doll he has all your ligament parts all he does to do is crush them and then you're done for he also have like an ability where he basically injects a spray in the air or a gas or water where that comes from his body and whatever that water touch you it creates copy of it so you will keep fighting yourself and get until you get yourself tired out now we don't know if the the copy basically it doesn't matter if the person has the strength it will mirror whatever it sees so that is a deadly ability so if him fighting Noritora he could probably outdo Noritora just by learning his ability and creating a copy of that and then match his energy with his and then Norito could get tired at a point where that's when he could knock him out okay so that's that's it for Alzelapado uh grants. So my next spotter that I really wanna and then I don't also wanna say and I forgot to say since he wasn't an Espada coming in and over time he became a spada eight and then Noritora became a spada five because Noritora was a spada eight before at that time when he was rank um in the Espada. So if you think about Dardoni could have been Espada number I think seven. He could have been higher than Noritora. And then over time he got kicked out and then that's how the ranking ended up changing. So if you think about it, Noritora is probably one of the longer members of the Espada because he didn't get kicked out. He actually got promoted. And then both of them got promoted. He became a spotter eight. He became a spot of five. Um, my next person I really want to add to the Espada list, and I don't think he's like bad, it's just that his techniques kind of like gets misunderstood. That is a spot of number eight. No, a spot of number nine. Like when I first saw his design, I really liked it. Out of Nero and out of Neri. Um, 
I will definitely put him on the B tier for appearance and for just technique but one cool thing about his design he looks like a gigantic magician at first I thought like that yellow bar which is part of the glass tank was like his mouth and then those little eyes was like his eyes which I when I first saw that when I was watching the anime I really got I'm like this is gonna be cool like this guy has like this entire you know thing going on with the appearance he I really like his appearance like um out of near out of near I would have thought they could have put him at number seven or number six ranking because his appearance looked very menacing out of the espadas he has that menacing look like this creepy look now when you start looking at the abilities that he possess it's very similar to Alzalapada where he could send out information telepathically where he could connect to any other espadas and they would know exactly what's going on at the moment so he's very good at transmitting um, communication and the only reason why um, he is very he's mid part in the tier is not only just for his appearance but what he can do in his base form now on his base form when it's not I would say he only works better during um, the night part of Hakamundo like he he gets really affected by the light that Aizen created so that's even when he was fighting Rukia he even mentioned that the problem with Aizen creating the um, the light is that some of the espadas only work better in the night and that question I will go back into and this is why I say some of the rankings are kind of correct and some of them are not correct but yeah Ardenero is very cool and I think his um his overall design and his speech pattern like he is the only Espada out of the um others or actually a Gillian and he basically merged with um um Rukia's old lieutenant subordinate basically he merged with that hollow thus making Ardenero's abilities now his resurrection is called Glotonaria and his aspect of death is basically greed because he has to keep devouring things to, to get stronger like in the anime as well as the data books it mentioned that he has absorbed 3000 something hollows so it means that he's in this position because he's not only able to grow as much the more he finds people the more stronger he's going to be depending how strong the opponent is so whatever opponent that he absorbs that's how strong he's going to be like for an example he merged himself with um Ki uh what's his name um TJ Kiba and he basically gained not only his bunkai but his ability so he has a very terrifying ability where because he could absorb and copy everything from the opponent he's able to use their abilities as well like for an example when he was fighting Rukia one of my favorite entrances of of a bunkai I would say that I like was his the release of the Kai and Shiba uh, resurrection um, um, the resurrection of his um, Bankai which is called Sintasi Zenjabada it's basically like a gigantic um, trident and the trident it has like water like at first I was getting like Poseidon vibes from it because it was such a cool entrance when he res um, released the um, Bunkai. Now, like I said, everything that the opponent that he absorbed, he can do. Now, when he start getting more crazy, which we didn't get to see the, the whole um, thing that he could do when he's at his resurrection. Because he kept playing around so much. Um, but um, his design right here, and when he goes to his um, Gluttonaria resurrection... Now, I will put it under appearance. I put it under C because it's kind of disgusting. But for power-wise, I would have put it under... You know what? I'll put it under B. 
But if it was for design, I would put it under C because it, it... No, yeah, I'll put it under C because it's kind of disgusting. But the ability, we didn't get to see as much from it. But definitely he is a... He's very, very um, sneaky when it comes to fighting because he said the only weakness... Yeah, I'll put it here because the weakness of him is that he has to fight in the dark. He cannot fight in even the fake daylight thus making him weaker than all the rest of the spotters that's up there now if it was at night he could literally you know start taking some people out and absorbing them but it depends on each spotter has a different level of spiritual pressure so depending on that that could be also too like the riyatsu and all of that stuff that comes with having a stronger you know appearance but Adonero and Adoniri has probably one of the interesting base design. But I just, if it was up to me, I would have changed his, um, his resurrection design. Okay. Um, the next Espada that I really want to talk about is Espada 7, Zamari. I would put his appearance under B tier because his design, his um, well look that like how he have like he looks very tribal which I really like and plus he's a black anime character which the way that they design him is well presented how a black um, person should look you know it's, it's very unique and the, I like the design of his and I would have thought he would I would have appreciate if he was a spot of five instead of Noritora because he's very a spot of seven is very level headed and then the, the bad part is that he's too loyal to Aizen and I don't want people that's like too stuck up to like not see for themselves instead of like blindly following someone that's the only why reason why he's like in between tier um, the cool thing about his the, the, his first appearance is that um, he's very level-headed. His ability he allows him to basically um, copy um, um, what is it? Um, what is it? His ability allows him to copy himself like the fast things like Sunido and stuff allows him to copy these things and therefore allowing him to literally um, create more of himself as he moves faster but the crazy part is that after like in his base his resurrection like going to his resurrection was pretty cool like he literally um, bend the sword of his um, technique and then his his head start like turning like some exorcist and I think his uh, um his um I think execution should be his aspect of death if I'm not missing intoxication or execution and when he goes to his resurrection he basically the sword basically implodes like an explosion and then it melts off his body and basically creating this um form of his um drew gluria and drew Bria, and that is his resurrection i will put it under c tier because like it may it has some deadly um hacks abilities but it's just that the appearance for me it was it was kind of what matters but his abilities is pretty deadly because every every time he looks at um something it needs to he needs to like look at it straight up and then control that body part like i said he's very similar to a xylopolo grunts where they create a copy of this person or in his case he has to look at that person and then that way he controls a part of that person's body um, and that ability is a very deadly ability because he could control more than 10 people if he has to 
and he could either make these people kill themselves or basically fight themselves until they tire themselves out. Now he fought Byaku and Byaku had some form of advantage because his sword um, allows him to create different petals. Zenbun Zakura allowed him to cut a lot of his eyes. Thus, it was very similar to how when Sasuke was fighting Danzu where Sasuke kept using his Genjutsu allowing Danzu to use his Azanagi much quicker than it should be and thus that's how um, Zamori ended up dying in the first place because he trusted Aizen so much and at the same time he didn't trust the situation where what was happening to him and therefore that's how he ended up being there now this is when it started getting very controversial for my next ranking I would put Yami for appearance I put Yami under B tier uh, now Yami was very similar to um you know what no I will put Yami here just for his attitude all three of them have something in common like the arrogance that they exude is nasty um, but Yami is like Nappa to Vegeta and um, the Sands because they were the first to show up when they first um, you know appeared in the um, human world to fight Ichigo and his ability was allowing him to like absorb so much um, human soul spiritual pressure and the um, aspect of death he represent is era which is rage um, depending on how you end up passing in life you could be so angry at a point where it becomes like a grudge or something like that and Yami each time the more he he's like the Hulk of the Espada the more he gets upset the more stronger he's going to be now you know how they're even on um, even on um, people making like rankings, they always say, oh, Urkiora had a second resurrection that Aizen didn't know about. I'm like, okay, that's true, but how come Aizen didn't know about Yami? Have, out of all the Espadas, Yami and Urkiora has literally the two, two releases. They both have two second resurrections. Yami is based on progression and the more he progressed to transforming the more resurrection he's going to have so in a way Yami could have at least three resurrections and we don't even know about like the cool thing is that his first resurrection I will put it under I will put it under um, I will put it under C tier because he gotten so big but at the same time he didn't know what to really move around from and that he started getting sluggish like even though he was like moving around and everything he was having problem on fighting like Rukia, Renji and Chad because he become like a gigantic like caterpillar or something and he kept hitting the ground and his feet but it was He's so strong, but at the same time, he's so slow, and that's how I'm able to put him so low at the um, list. Now, going on to like his second resurrection, which um, based on his aspect of death and that his abilities, and he's the only spotter that in order for him to get strong, he has to eat a lot and sleep. And to gain a lot of spiritual pressure and then release that all at once to get his form now his second resurrection I will put it under B tier because he got beaten by two of the best captains in the series Kenpachi and um what's his name Kenpachi and um squad six captain uh, Byakuya so I put him on the zero because even though he has the biggest spiritual pressure and they said that his ranking was zero, that still doesn't change that he can't pinpoint his opponents. Like you see how the Juby when he turned to like, when the Juby was like ranting, 
as strong as it was, it couldn't pinpoint its opponents. Whereas, it's very similar to that. You may be strong, but can you really direct your opponent's attack or attack them at a certain point when you need to? You know. Now, for appearance-wise, I would have put it on their um, B tier anyway. Now, his first resurrection was kind of ugly because it looked like this gigantic buffoon. Whereas the second one, he actually looked like a freaking devil. And like he he looked like what um, Chad was like his grandpa, like the left arm of the devil, whatever it was. It looks like that in his second. One. He looks like a gigantic demon beast, right? In his second resurrection, it kind of looked it tough too. That's why I put it under B tier, you know. But the capacity power it lacked was very very lacking. But for appearance rise, I, that's why I put it under B tier. But Yami, even though if I were to rank Yami, and that was another thing people don't talk about. Do you think Yami was a preview on a spotter and then got promoted? Just like um, Azalapado and um, Noritora. I think they got promoted to the rankings. That's what I think. That's why I think Yami was 11 and then got into 10. And then because of what Aizen saw that all he do is eat and sleep. But at the same time, gained so much power just from anger. That's how he became a spot of zero just based on Ryotsu. That's the only way that he that would make sense. Okay? But let's start going higher now. For my next Espadas. Now, this is gonna get crazy because the the last the the last upcoming Espadas are so good and their abilities and as well as their endurance and how they fight their enemies was so good that I had to really take think about how I was gonna do the last upcoming Espadas. So my first person that I'm gonna talk about for appearance and for design and attitude and like just badassery. Grim Jow is on my A plus tier for appearance as well as like impression for my first time seeing him. Like he didn't give no fucks like when he first showed up. Like he was like, I just want to know who, which one of you guys are the strongest so I can start hurting people. And I liked it that. Like, he's like the hothead, but not too crazy at a point where he's going to be stupid about it. Like, he's actually smart. You know, unlike Noritora, he doesn't... Grimja doesn't care about if you're a female or male. All he got to know is that if you're going to give him a good fight, he's going to fight you for real, for real. You know, he's not about to be... He's not about to be sneaky while you're down. He'd rather see both of you at the same power length to see how strong you're going to be, you know. Now, after um, Grimja losing his arm, he was still number six, but Lupi got in the way to become number six. But that got out the way. But um, he did come back in the... Um, thousand year blood war arc and still looked at the same the only thing that was different was that he had like a new um look now i'm not too sure if he has a new resurrection after all these years that has passed and how strong he has you know become but we definitely know that he probably is stronger than some of the espadas that were there before um Grimjaw's resurrection is called Pantera. Grot Pantera. So, and then his, um, his Espada ranking is on his lower right side on his back. Um, that has the number six on it. Um, his aspect of death is destruction. Like, he was like a animal king. So, he really wanted to show that dominancy and how we got a little bit of backstory how he became like how he was you know he tried to absorb his friends and like people that wanted to follow him and eventually he became the espada that we gone to know now because he just wanted to get stronger and be something more than himself um the cool thing is that when he came back and um the upcoming bleach he's gonna be different but very compo he's a composed fighter too you know 
he's not gonna run through things and some of his craziest technique which where he creates like the um, technique where it's like a gigantic claw that becomes like a defense and offense technique and then he also have like Dunray Ciro and he has like a regular Ciro which his Ciro I think he has two Ciro's he has a blue one and then he has a red one like a regular Ciro um, like I said her appearance and ability wise he is very strong physical wise and like I said unlike Yami he could really pinpoint his um, abilities like when he attacks an opponent so that's why I like that and then for his resurrection Pantera I definitely put it on the A plus tier because it's pretty strong and that he's able to ravage someone even though at his base he just was killing people before but when he goes to his resurrection he has speed the energy and then the finesse to to fight someone you know so it's pretty cool like now um i'm not sure if it's me but i think did his hollow um hole moved or it stayed the same i probably it did but yeah, Gremja is um, put at number 6 because of the, um, well he's placed at the A plus tier because of looks, appearance, ability, and how he composed himself. Like, he's he's an asshole but not a complete douchebag where he's like beating his enemies while they're still down, you know. Now, the next Espada that I'm going to put up. This one is tricky, um, but I'm going to put it anyway. For her first appearance, even though she was a preview on Espada, but she was still the current Espada. She's the only Espada that even though she's a preview on, she still is number three. And now that moving on to the um, appearance part, Nell is, um, her appearance is very beautiful and earthy and she is a badass by any mood if Nell and I don't know why they never did that while Nell was still like an, I know that Orohime could reject any past event that has happened she could have recreate the bone that was on top of her head that was slashed off by Noritora and Azalapado you know instead of getting like a bracelet from Urahara to keep her at this form but she is still strong. She is Espada number three, former Espada number three. Um, like they said, but that's another thing too. You know how they said that um, Ukiora stated, due to Espada rankings, any Espada that has rank from fourth above can't release from the canopy of Lost Noches, right? And that's why I say a lot of people don't question that details to anime matters because you're not just talking about the facts but you're talking about that's why I'm like okay so if you think that was so possible how come Yami who is Espada 0 is a law that Espada's from rank 1 to and above one, well no Espada from 4 and above cannot release Yami released inside of the, the palace as big as he was he released inside the palace so thus making him even though his his has a second resurrection and everything it didn't matter because even though he had a spot of zero his rank didn't matter because he still transformed inside the canopy of lost noches he didn't go outside of lost noches and transform he didn't go to the actual lost noches and transform so that goes to show that yes Yami was zero but he was still weaker than most of the Espadas. I would have put Yami best at fifth ranking when it comes to Espadas. Okay? So Nell also has similar problem where as strong as she was, because due to the loss over the years of her Ryutsu were leaking out, as they said. She was able to release inside of Lost Noche's canopy instead of outside of it. Now, Nell has 
the appearance of Nell and the ability that she possessed when she was little where she could drool but heal you but at the same time she's more of a earthy espada you know um, she's able to heal she's able to um, you know um, has an ability where it's called Cero Doble where she absorbed your Cero and then reflected back onto you which was pretty cool I really liked it that now another cool thing about her appearance she has like this tribal mark on the bottom of her eyes like a red mark um, she is very what I like about Nell and her characteristic she's very composed I like characters that are they're nonchalant but they're very composed they don't need to say much they're not trying hard to impress anyone they know where they sit in their hierarchy they're not gonna do too much to impress but if you were to step their toes they're gonna shoot down with you and show you like this is where you belong this is where I belong and shows the difference between the pirates so Nell is this very similar to that type of um, character but the reason why I place her at A plus tier is that due to the loss of her abilities after getting attacked by a weaker Spada because he thought he was stronger she lost some of her um, power so her abilities kind of decrease her resurrection is called Gamusa and she basically becomes a beautiful centaur um, her abilities works with the lance that is in her hand one of her favorite abilities is Lenza de Lavago um, no, Lanzadori Verde, which is an ability where she throws this at a um, thrust drill speed, thus impacting the opponent. You know, one of this hit almost killed Noritora if it wasn't for his hero being strong. But Nell has such an amazing... And that's crazy, we never got um, the aspect of death that she possessed. I think it was something about um, pride pride or um, something that involves um, she was very proud of on she represent like a champion like a um, warrior spirit like worthiness like if you don't have like honor she's not gonna fight you because she don't want someone lower than her or even a beast to and be in her consciousness as she said it um, but for a resurrection and appearance rise I like how composed it is and how devastating she could be if she has to but she's very nice and it's crazy that she says she don't want to fight a beast but her resurrection is a resemble of a human and a beast at the same time so it's pretty crazy and it's great out of all the espadas most of them as we get to like the higher position of some of the espadas we see that some of the resurrection kind of look more human and animal merge instead of like being like a hollow or craziness of how the other espadas are so I like that about Grimjaw and Nell and she came back in the thousand year blood war arc with a new look and design but she still look herself and I like that and I appreciate that now this is when it gets tricky guys Whew. thank you for for guys for keeping up with me because I really decided to like took my time to like break this out for each of my YouTube fans because I really wanted to do this ranking and talk to people about why some of the rankings are kind of messed up the way it is but if you guys were to see um, this is how I would you know rank it um, but yeah thank you guys for still watching um, let's continue so now we're gonna start talking about some crazy feats now for an example this is gonna be hard very hard if it was up to me and that's just my opinion due to the fact that those spotters are so knit tight I could have put all of them in S tier right but it's not the case now Nell, Haribel and Urkiora all three of them are probably one of my favorite spotters but I'm gonna bring back what I said before 
So my A tier for appearance and composure and abilities and all like at first was Urkiora. I put him on the eighth plus tier because when we first he was the first spotter that we see and his appearance and his composure like green eyes and like black hair he looks very emo <laughs> and I think a lot of people like his character due to how composed he is he is the Vegeta of the Espadas he's not you know crazy headed where he's like oh I'm gonna do this no like he's so composed that you don't really know what he's going on but we know that it's always the ones that talks less tend to be the stronger ones and more reserved um, what I like about Urkiyoro is like his aspect of death is um, nihilism which he doesn't feel anything or believe in anything he's just living and that that's a scary aspect to have because throughout every battle that he had he had that like nonchalant expression that like you know you can't beat me this is where I am this is where you are and it's gonna keep staying like that until you decide to, to meet me at where I am you know um, his abilities is very very unique um, he is some of the few spotters that I isn't actually trust the most that's why a lot of people were like saying that he might be the leader of the spot because out of all the spotters Aizen gave him the most responsibilities like go get Orohime, um, make a diversion for the other ones to attack to see what the other characters are doing, um, record everything and then use your body as a medium so that the other spotters could see what's going on in the real world. Like he has so many different abilities in his base form and then his signature move is like he punch a hole right through your freaking chest without even trying and his hands is always in his pocket like even when he was fighting he always used his hand for every like they um Ichigo threw a zero and then he just pushed that like brush it off he was like you need to stop doing that like he he was like a such a robot it's like that's why he was very terrifying because when we actually got the reveal of his ranking people were like wait what like you're so strong that you're just number four and then Urkiyo was like yeah I'm number four but that doesn't mean anything like you still have other spotters that are ranked higher than me but that doesn't change the fact that I'm still higher than most of the ones that you have fought so Urkiyo for appearance rise like the nonchalant and like reserve i like reserve characters i don't like characters that's like flunking gear um skills so much because that makes you look weak because you have to prove yourself every time you step into a room i like people that's like don't have to say much so when they do do something everybody's in shock um i really like that um for his resurrection well his first resurrection it's called um, Mercilago. Now, this is where I start talking about why I believe Urkiora, his resurrection, is actually diminish his abilities instead of him getting stronger. He has the same problem, and a lot of people don't talk about that. And I believe that nobody don't talk about that. People always scale Ukira so strong because he has two resurrection. Well, guess what? Um, Yami did have two resurrection too. But he plays the same problem with, um, what should we call it, Auto Nero. So his first resurrection, he looks like a angelic but bat-like creature. Um, he looks, it's like, at first I became good and then I became bad. That's the type of thing I'm getting from him. So his his first resurrection is called Mercy Lago, in case Mercy Lago, right? So while the battle was happening, Urkiara decides to open a rift and goes outside of Lost Noches Castle and release his resurrection. But before he said that, he mentioned the danger of an Espada from rank from four and higher is that 
under no circumstances that we should release our resurrection and the canopy of lost notches so that's one he decided to leave lost notches castle and transform on actually on the actual outside of lost notches so when he decided to release his resurrection outside of lost notches it had me thinking so every espada that we have seen before that were resurrecting was resurrecting inside of Lost Notches like in the canopy of Lost Notches the castle and even though it was a fake sunlight their abilities were still working except for um, Auto Nero which his ability he needs to be in the, in the dark to order for it to work so it had me thinking Ukiora can't not register reg, um, resurrected in the day um, daytime he has to do it in nighttime he has the same ability well the same problem as um, Adonera and Adoniri because it's like I can't function without I can't function without having um, the ability to be out I have to be outside in order for me to actually release my resurrection and that makes sense because it's like that's why he is ranked number four because his abilities tend to work better when he's at nighttime than during the daytime that's why if if it was Aizen it was a up to Aizen Aizen would have took Ukriyora and the fake Karakura town right which would make sense right but because his abilities only work in Lost Notches his resurrection only works in Lost Notches it doesn't work anywhere else because Lost Notches doesn't have sunlight and only have nighttime all the time Aizen created a fake sun in order for it to give like a normalcy right keep up with me that's why when he goes to his second resurrection which is his um, Mercy Lago Sengute and Tapa I put it in S ring because it, he became so strong that he needs a second layer to to move around his whereabouts of his abilities and the fact that people a lot of people say oh Aizen didn't know about his ability well no because Aizen kept track of Ichigo since the moment he saw him and recorded every single thing so I believe Aizen may have known about him having a second form just like people say oh he's the only one that has a second release no Yami has a second release too but he he's released become a progressive release because the more angry he gets the more release transformation he's going to get right because from the first form of Yami to the second form he lost all the legs that he had and gained like a, a animal form half body animal form so now he's standing like on a hooves like a, a, a sheep or a goat and Urkiora from his angelic look from his first um, form to his second form where he becomes like a, a night wing type of demon bat he's so strong and at the same time his hollow hole actually becomes on his chest indicating his nihilism um, aspect of death and the cool thing about it is that he managed to not only create and then the abilities that he possesses slightly similar to Nell's whereas his are like um, angelic um, it's almost like angelic weapons like the Lunza del Pago it's like a giant lance very similar to Nell's the way he throws it each time he throws one it's like a he's like Zeus he's like Zeus or Hades each time he throws something the ability becomes so impactful that it's crazy and it's crazy because it's like the ability is going to keep getting stronger and stronger each time he, and then he has um, regenerating powers outside but anything that affects his internal organs cannot be healed so let's say if we were to put Urkiora in the fake Karakura town, how well you think he would have done? Because I think his abilities, like I said, 
plays and during the night time. So would Ukyo would have been weaker because Aizen would have have to make the sky or some form of an ability where Ukiora's ability could have worked. Because as we've seen, Adonero could not use his abilities during that fake sun due to the um, power lacking that he was facing. So that's why I believe in that. And that's why I said I put him on the ST because of his devastating abilities and what he could create out of them. Now, what Ukiyota said is accurate because anybody that is above him cannot release and lost notches. So let's start with the next one. In my opinion, I believe Stark should have been number. I believe Stark could have been number number. Um, yeah, I believe Stark could have been number three. No, let me put that back. Where is it? I could have put Stark at number three or number two. <sighs> yeah, I'll put him at number three. In my opinion, I would put Stark at number three. Not just because of appearance, because his appearance is very... He's very... He mirrors the... Uh, um, what is it? Captain Koraku? He's very laid back. No, Sun Shui. Like, he's very laid back. He's nonchalant, but he's very lazy. But he's serious at the same time. Like, Stark is no joke. And I put him next to Urkiyora because of the um, devastating capacity that he has. His cereals are actually larger than some of the original cereals. And his cereal is not red. All his cereals are like blue or pure blue. Um, he has one of the abilities where it's called Cero Metorogeta, where he, when he goes to his um, resurrection, which is Los Lobos, um, basically, I also would put his resurrection in S tier, because his cereals are not normal cereals. They actually hurts more than original cereals. I don't see him using balas. Like the ability where it's like a sound proof that it bounces very fast. Like I said, um, the from ranking from Espada's from Espada four and above, their abilities are more catastrophic than um, other Espadas. Now, like I said, Stark's abilities were due to the fact that he had to split himself into two bodies. And his other body is Linenet Gingerback, which is also part of the Espada 1 um, ranking. That's why I put him so high up there. Um, he is very, very strong. And the abilities that he possesses, and that's another thing. Because of the energy that Stark has, like the Ryatsu, his Ryatsu comes off very radiation which people don't realize um, because anybody that couldn't stand his Ryotsu end up dying around him if you saw it, even in the backstory arc for him a little bit every every Espada or um, every Hollow that approach him dies because they couldn't stand the spiritual pressure of his presence until like Aizen showed up and was like you're not going to be lonely anymore because his aspect of death is solitude, right? And the fact that the top three or the top four spotters are able to hang around him due to his not, they're not, technically it's like they're not scared of his radiation riatsu where they're not dying off. And you realize the top three managed to hang in a room where the others couldn't. You know, even though when they were like at the Espada, um, you know, table, we saw that it's like Eisen created like the room where everybody could adjust themselves in the room where the spiritual pressure would not affect them. But at the same time, Eisen also gave them a law that they can't go anything outside if they're trying to fight or do any resurrection. That's why Eisen took the top three to go to Karakura Town because. They would have fight better because not only some of them were holding back, but I believe that 
if they really wanted to start serious from the beginning, they would all would have went in their resurrection form and start kicking ass. But at the same time, they're already stronger in their base. Each of the top three spotters, you could rank them based on Urkiora's um, first resurrection, just in base. When it start going crazy, that's when it's kind of roughly around Singuta Etapa transformation in his second release. Like for start, him really powering up is like Singuta Etapa's um, going on to like in between his second resurrection. But after start release, I would say he's roughly around Singunta and Tapa or even stronger than it because of the destruction cap um, capabilities that he has with his serial rolls and his ability to shoot serials rapidly. You know, for appearance for resurrection design, he is probably the coolest thing um, besides um, Lilibero, which is a Stern Raider for the Thousand Year Blood War arc. He's very cool because both of them are the only two um, characters that carries like weapons, like guns and everything. So I like that. Um, like I said, the reason why I put him there is like when he goes to his resurrection, it's not too changeable, you know. But he becomes like a gunslinger, like a, a cowboy type. It would have been cool if he had like a hat or something like that or a helmet. But he just end up having like an eye patch or something. So that's that. Um, he also have like the um, Coyote Stark. Which is the ability to create um, silver wolves. Those wolves are Seros and they're part of his body. So they're able to shoot. So his resurrection is different because he doesn't have a sword release. He actually has to like call Lost Lobos and merge with Lilinette. And that's how he's able to have his resurrection okay so now you know this was coming because we're about to finish for my second person that I will put for appearance and composure and people could fight me on that I would have put Harry Bell at number two if it was the top three, I would have put Hari Bell at number two. Um, out of all the Espadas, her and Bargon has history. It's not like they never did. Um, Hari Bell, out of all of them, is my favorite Espada. And her composure, her first appearance, is very similar to Nell. And if you look, I put them right on the top of each other. Like that, it's pretty cool. Her appearance is very composed. She has like this mask um, jacket that goes all the way up her face. The only thing you're seeing is her eyes and how. And she has like that type of eyes where it's very similar to Urkiora. It's like they're not really surprised. It's like all three of them are like that. Harry Bell, Nell, and Urkiora. Like they're very composed. Even Stark too. Like they're very composed. And then like if you try to do anything, like they're gonna figure it out. It's like it's no problem no brainer you know the cool thing about them is that they can she definitely is one of the stronger Espadas and I will explain why a lot of people will put her below Urkiora or anything but let's not forget that um, going on to her resurrection and her first experience and how composed she was she she's a very level-headed person she's not gonna rush into things and she is probably one of the kinder espadas because she's not gonna be like those type of that's like greedy after power she has a quote where she said that you know if she can't win in a group or no if she can't win alone she will win in a group so it goes to show she really care about her other um team subordinates like her fracionis um Harry Bell's um, first um, appearance and resurrection and as well as her number is three but at the same time there was a part in the manga that they put as number two which I wouldn't mind you know if she was the second you know the Sudatorian Espada and then you had the primary the Valid Victorian Espada 
um, but um, Harry Bell Resurrection is called um, Command Tiburon, which is a um, Spanish name for shark. Um, her resurrection is very revealing, but it's a very nice design. She has this gigantic large um, tooth that represent a um, you know a shark tooth. She also has the power to manipulate water, which is one of the abilities that she has. So some of her biggest abilities is um, Cascada, which is a manipulation of water where she creates this gigantic wave of water, which could not only crush um, large areas. This is when we start seeing the devastation powers of ranking from fourth and above because their, their powers are not just small, but it's like continental powers because it's like she could cover entire city of water or flood it entirely just by two hits or even one of her abilities um, when she revealed her ranking her mass her bone mass cover her entire chest all the way up to her mouth level and then when she goes to her resurrection she managed to um, you know be even more vigilant now if they would have created and gave it more time of how the fight should have went down we could have seen more abilities for her because I don't think she just only have water manipulation she probably have something even greater than that and the fact that the bleach anime is coming back so we might get to see if Hari Bell got a new resurrection form that would be very interesting to see that um, that would be very interesting because we know that after the Eisen arc and what ended up happening three years after that before the invasion of the Quincy's um, Harry Bell ended up fighting the leader and got taken down but well, we're not sure if it was Uyuha Bak himself or one of the um, Lloyd and Roy um, Espadas that managed to take that down um, but yeah, Harry Bell's resurrection um, and aspect of death is a sacrifice, which is very fitting for her because she's she looks like the type of person that she would give it her all to protect a person or someone that she cares about, and she will go very furious if she doesn't have the ability. So yeah, now finally we're gonna talk about the king himself. I believe Bardagon could have been number one in Spada, but due to the fact that Aizen just don't like Bardagon in general, and that he took his throne away from him, um, we didn't know what abilities Bardagon had before he ended up becoming like the human-like appearance that we've seen before, but um, we know that he ended up gaining so much after that but that's also his downfall too his greatest strength is also his greatest downfall because of his arrogance and his ability to just don't see things clearly he's able to mislead things and thus putting him in a tight position now bargain originally is ranked number two but i would have put him at number one um due to the fact that He's very knowledgeable. He thinks on his feet. He even when Eisen was sealed in the a fire, he basically knew exactly what he needs to do. Um, his aspect of death is senescence or aging, able to see anything that's aging, which is very fitting because everything that he has seen or done is revolve around aging and that his ability which is called respira when he goes to his resurrection where his resurrection is definitely s tier um it's called um arogrante which is rot and aging so therefore that's his ability is very hacks that's that's for one um the crazy part is that anything that he touch or have done 
he could just rot it away buildings the only weakness that we saw it has is that is himself what's stopping him is himself and the only way that they were managed to take that him down was by using himself and using a keto to put a part of himself in his body thus killing him but Bargun is very resistant to any other techniques and he literally nullifies it like for example if Zalapado managed to like throw one of his techniques at him he'll just nullify it and age it um, anything else is like he's he's gonna he's gonna destroy and then even if Urkiora versus um, Bargon I don't even think the lands del Pago would even work because it's like he will age anything that's in the surrounding area and on top of that you're forgetting that Urkiora could only um, heal internal um external external um organs he can't heal internal organs once they're not functionable so if if he cuts some or if he incinerate because the respira incinerates human's body to the bone so i don't even think he will have time to heal and then if we saw that um the respira will not go away until it eats away everything it's very like amaterasu the respira is very amaterasu until somebody else put it out that's the only way that that could be fixed you know but yeah this is my ranking and let me know what you guys think now i know it was a long video but i'm glad that you guys stick to see it and let me know what you guys think do you guys think that um, the rankings are correct do you think that what would you would have changed so if it was my opinion um, Yami would have been number number um, no Norito would have been number 10 um, Aizalapada would have been number 9 Yami would have been number 8 Zamari would have been number seven again. Number six would have been um, Adoniero. Number five would have been Grimjow. Number uh, number four, I would have keep it to Urkiora because he is very menacing. And then the four represent death and some Chinese um, tradition. So I will leave it there. Number three would have been Stark. Number two would have been between Nell or Haribel. And number one would have been Bargon. So let me know what you guys think. As always guys, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. Now I know it was a long video, but I did say I was going to take my time to explain my reasons of why I picked them. So as always guys, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.